right, so it's time to talk about chord voicings. Now, if you could play piano but knew absolutely nothing about jazz and I gave you the lead sheet to the song All The Things You Are, which you can see here in the picture in picture, you might play it something like this. So you played all the chords correctly, you played the melody correctly, great. The problem is of course that your left hand's jumping around a lot, so it sounds a bit sort of disjointed and a bit strange. So if you practice it up a bit, you might play something like this. So that time, my hand wasn't jumping around, but I, I was still playing quite simple chords, just straight seventh chords, like F minor seven, the first chord. And that's called a block chord, and it's just built up in thirds. And then, whereas the first time I was playing block chords, but only in root position, And the second time I was still playing block chords, but I was alternating between root position and second inversion. So um, F minor 7 in root position to B flat minor 7 in second inversion. Now in all my previous videos where I discussed music theory or jazz theory, I used block chords. Mostly because they're pretty easy to play, they're easy to understand, and if you pause the video, you can see exactly what chord I'm playing. Uh, F minor 7 in this case. So in terms of understanding music theory or starting off playing, block chords are really useful precisely because they're simple. Now the problem is that they're not very exciting. In jazz you will only very very rarely hear someone playing straight block chords because, precisely because they're so simple and relatively harmonically boring. Instead in jazz you'd hear more complex chords with extensions and alterations being played because they, they give the whole song a bit more of an interesting harmonic texture. And you won't often see a chord just being played in um, sort of a closed harmony. That is, one note up in thirds right after the other. All the notes really clump together. Instead, you'll see things like... So that's a C major 7, the C, E, G and B. But they're spread out over a number of octaves, and so it gives the whole sort of chord and the song you're playing a bit more balance because it's got sort of a bass part and a middle part, and then if you start sort of playing the melody or improvising in the higher parts, it also gives you a treble part. So it gives the song a much more sophisticated, much more well-rounded and balanced sound. Now often when you play a chord on piano, you would play it using both hands. Again, to give you that sort of wider range of notes, or of octaves. There are, however, voicings where you just use your left hand, so purely left hand chord voicings. And so in this video, that's precisely what I'm going to cover, just left hand chord voicings, so that your right hand is completely free to play the melody or improvise. And then in upcoming videos, I'm going to cover um, two-handed chord voicings, so like this one. And then I'll also make a few videos on a few commonly used voicings like um, so what voicings or quartal chord voicings or maybe upper structures or drop two voicings, things like that that give your piano playing a bit more of a sophisticated and, and jazzy sound. But let's start with just left hand voicings. Now these are called rootless voicings and the reason is, as you'll see in a moment, because they're rootless. Now there's the type A rootless chord voicing and the type B rootless chord voicing which are widely used by pianists and I'll go over both in this lesson. So let's take a simple 2-5-1 in C major, so D minor 7 to G7 to C major 7. So again, that's just using block chords. Now, if we take that D minor 7, we drop the D, which makes it rootless, and we add the 9th at the top, then we have a voicing like that, with the 3rd at the bottom. 
So that's the third, the fifth, the seventh, and the ninth of D minor seven. Then when we move to the G7, all we have to do is drop the seventh of the D one semitone. And that's a kind of disguised G7. So we've got F the seventh, A the ninth, B the third, and E the thirteenth. So that's a G13. And usually when you voice 13 chords, you play the ninth and the thirteenth, you skip the eleventh completely. And then when we get to the C major seven, we can play something like this. So that's a C69. The E is the third, G is the five, the A is the sixth, and the D is the ninth. So again, that's a rootless C69. So that's what's called a type A rootless chord voicing, where you have the D minor nine with the third in the bass, the G13 with the seventh in the bass, and then the C6-9, or you can just do a C major 9 with the third in the bass. So over a 2-5-1, the note at the bottom in the bass would be 3-7-3. Three, three. Now a type B rootless chord voicing is the inversion of that, where instead of going 3-7-3, three, seven, three, we go 7-3-7 seven, seven in the bass. So it'll look like this. That's the D minor 9. Again, we've taken these two notes and just moved them down here so that the 7th is at the bottom. Then again, the G13. So again, we've moved these two notes at the top down here. And then the C6-9, which again, we've moved these two notes down here. So then in the bass, we've got 7-3-7. Seven, and that's the only difference. The type A and the type B, or the position A and the position B, um, rootless voicings on piano, just refer to that. In a 2-5-1, the bass has the notes 3-7-3 three, three in a type A voicing, and 7-3-7 seven, seven in a type B chord voicing. So if we play just a 2-5-1 in block position, the it sounds like this. nice and sweet, um, but not really a lot going on. Now let's play that same little phrase, but using the type A voicings. See, already that sounds a little bit more harmonically complex and a bit more interesting. Now again, let's play that same little phrase using the type B voicings. See, again, a bit more interesting than just the regular block chords. Now the issue with these chords is that because they're quite um, harmonically complex and the notes are quite close together, you can only really play them in this sort of register, in this two, um, maybe a little bit further, this two and a bit octave range. If you start playing them down here, they sound really muddy and sort of the, the pleasantness gets lost a little bit. It sounds, sounds a bit muddy, sounds a bit dirty, there are too many sort of, sounds a bit dissonant, there are too many um, conflicting overtones, um, and it doesn't sound especially nice. So when you're playing these voicings, you really want to stay sort of in the middle register of the piano. Now, the reason we use these chord voicings is, again, because they are a little bit more harmonically complex, um, so they sound a bit more interesting. The transition between the chords is much smoother. For example, going from the D minor 7 to the G7, you only need to move one note, and you only move it a semitone. So everything stays quite close together, which A makes it easier to play, and B makes it just sound a little bit more um, compact and a bit sort of more pleasant and just a bit nicer because you're not jumping around too much. And now if you go through those chords, you'll notice that we drop the root in each one of those chords and we drop, drop the fifth in the G13. Right? There's no D, there's no fifth in that chord. Now the reason we can do that is because the important notes in a chord are the third and the seventh. 
So in all of these rootless voicings, you have the third and the seventh in that little chord voicing. The root and the fifth mm -hmm. are not important because they don't really add anything to the chord quality or to the chord texture. For example, a C major seven is this with the C and the G. A C minor seven is this, still C and the G. A C dominant seven is this still the C and the G. So the C and the G are the same um, on the C major, the C minor and the C dominant 7 chords. Therefore they're not really adding anything new, they're not creating a different texture um, and for that reason they're completely dispensable. You can get rid of them and still have that same type of chord quality. Now the only thing you need to keep in mind is that when you're playing a block chord 2-5-1 the left hand is really driving home the sort of the harmonic bass or the tonality of the chord progression. You've got the D, the G, and then the C. That means you can sort of play more wacky stuff up here. And still have that 251 feeling happening down the bottom. However, these rootless chord voicings, because they're rootless, they, they kind of float around a bit more. They're a bit more ambiguous. For example, as you may have noticed, the D minor 9 is actually voiced exactly like the F major, uh, F major 7. And as such, it's a little bit more ambiguous. And for that reason, you sort of need to ground the right hand or the improvisation or the melody more in the key by focusing on the guide tones or the root a little bit more. So if you play something really strange up here that uses a lot of um, outside notes... The chord progression, the 2-5-1 feel, kind of gets lost. Whereas if you stick to the guide tones and the root notes over this same chord voicing... You reintroduce that 2-5-1 feel because of the notes you're playing in your right hand. Now the good part about these voicings is that you can then alter some of the notes um, to create an even more interesting sound. For example, the D minor 9, you've got the 3rd and the 7th, which you can't alter otherwise you alter the quality of the chord, but you can make it a D minor 7 flat 9, or a D minor 7 flat 5 flat 9. Similarly on the G13, that's your, again, the 3 and the 7 you can't alter, but you can flatten the 9th and flatten the 13th. So you get a G7 flat 9 flat 13. And again, um, instead of playing the usual 3, 5, 7, 9, the C major 9 here, um, what I did was play the C6 9, so I modified it here. But you could also play a C major 7 flat 9, or a C major 7 sharp 9, or a C major 9 sharp 11. Now I should also mention, just like what I mentioned before, when you play a G13, you play the 9th and the 13th, but you miss the 11th. When you're playing a C major 11 chord, you usually sharpen the 11th, because if you've seen my video on avoid notes, the 11th over a C major 7 is the F. And that's an avoid note because it sounds a bit dissonant because um, it creates a minor ninth interval with the third. So generally um, you would only play sharp elevenths over a major chord or a dominant chord. You wouldn't usually see a natural eleven. However, over the minor chord, the natural eleven is fine. So that's just something else to keep in mind when you're voicing these chords as well. So now, whatever song you're playing, instead of playing block chords, you should introduce this Type A and Type B chord voicings, and you'll find that it sounds a little bit more jazzy, a bit more complex. Now, at the beginning of this video, I played all the things you are using block chords. Now, so if I were to play um, that same song, All the Things You Are, using Type A um, rootless chord voicings, it'll sound like this. Right, 
Alright, so if you go back and listen to um, me playing it at the beginning of this video, you'll, sound, you'll hear that this version sounds a lot more interesting, a lot more complex. There are a few more dissonant notes in there. Um, and it just sounds a bit more harmonically interesting. And so that was a type A because I started with this shape. But you can do the exact same thing with the type B voicing. down here because I've sort of gone a bit too low, but you get the general idea. So play around with those chord voicings, the type A and the type B chord voicings. I'll write them in the description so that you can sort of um, have a reference and sort of see what they actually look like. Um, but if you use those, you'll find that they are much more interesting and much more harmonically complex. Um, and yeah, so have a play around with those. In the next couple of videos, like I said, I'll go over two-handed chord voicings, how to start practicing them up and how to develop them, as well as some widely used chord voicings like so what chord voicings and quartal voicings. Um, hope you can join me for that. Anyway, thanks for watching. See ya!